how to slow roll, right? Uh, this is something I've been, this is a progression I've been using in my own academy for at least like 15 years or something. And um, I've never actually taken it to a camp format because usually I do it over a period of at least a week or two or three weeks to get people into it. I, I have this kind of basic course that I will do every six months or every year, depending on how many beginners we have. Um, but um, recently I thought, let me try it out at a camp setting, see if I can squeeze that down to one hour. It's a bit of a challenge, but um, especially when I'm late. But um, we can, uh, I think it's been working pretty well. I've done it twice now and, uh, and uh, we'll give it a shot today as well, yeah? Um, basically, there's a few things that always annoyed me in jiu-jitsu, like I talked about in my in my in the wrestling class the other day. But one of the things that that always bothered me, like, is um, we all know in every academy there's someone who just cannot fucking relax. Yeah, <laughs> we're laughing because everybody's thinking about one exact person right now. Yeah, <laughs> there's always someone like who will just from day one and ten years later still be go oh, absolute ape shit in every round, right? You want to warm up? Sure. Like flying heel hooks left and right. Yeah? <laughs> and like, come on. And uh, nobody wants to be that guy, right? Um, but how do we fix this? Because it's obviously a very common problem, right? It's something that everybody's laughing when I say it because they're like, ah, uh, that one fucking guy in my gym. I always dodge him at the warm up. If you're late and he's the only one there and you show up for class, you're like, oh, I just have to uh, fix something on my my shoes first before I get on the mat, you know? I don't want to warm up with that guy for sure. Huh? Um, but there's a problem because how do we fix this? Uh, we know the solution. We've been taught uh, in jiu-jitsu. The solution is very simple. The instructor will smash this person super hard until they learn to relax, right? That's usually the, the way it's treated. Oh, he cannot relax, so I'm gonna teach him a lesson by going even harder, right? He can't stop punching me in the face. I'm gonna punch him until he stops punching people, right? It's like, it always annoyed me, right? And it never works for me. I, I tried this, and I was like, okay, I guess this is what we do because this is what people told me. Christian, if someone is wild in training, you smash him, right? I was like, I was like okay, I'm gonna to try to go super hard on him every round. And you know, it never fucking works. There's, they're, 10 years later, they're still really, really difficult to train with and dangerous sometimes. And they don't know. It's not like they're idiots. They just don't have the skill. And I do not believe the solution is to, to crush them until they just magically start to relax and slow roll, right? That, that's, that's kind of, that logic never worked with me. Um, so I, I've been thinking a lot about this because I've been teaching since white belt, pretty much. That's how I learned jiu-jitsu. And, and this was a problem that I ran into very early. Like, uh, why can people not relax? Why can they not go slow, roll easy? Um, so it was something I worked on a solution for for many years. and. Um, I, we kind of, kind of came up with this progression that we're doing with everyone, and I would say uh, nine out of ten people can learn this very quickly. And nine out of ten of the spassers, like the spassy white belts. Right? I can take them through this, and they will become nice slow rollers in a very, very short period of time. Uh, sometimes even in one class, but sometimes it takes a week or two, or three weeks, and then I will pick them for warm up every single time. There's always very few people who will just never. I, I, they're just out of reach. But that is what it is, right? Uh, it's usually the same people who, after 10 years, still like. I have I have a few guys who train with like maybe for 10 years, and uh, and they still do uh, whatever. When I see them roll, I still don't see them do a single thing I've ever taught. It's just like random things, right? Somehow it kind of works for some of them, you know. And um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of interesting that some people just do not absorb like whatever I tell them, right? We're laughing because there's always someone like this, you know? And some of them are uh, never progress, and some of them actually become really, really good without doing anything that you ever showed them, right? That's also why I think lineage is kind of weird because like, I mean, I, the people who train with me, it's more about their personality and their skills than who they randomly sign up with as an instructor, that was me. Anyway, that's another talk. So, um, so how do we fix this? I, I picked up some drills uh, many, many years ago, almost, I think almost 18, 17, 18 years ago, I was training a lot in the US. I picked up some drills and I started to use these to kind of create a progression to make people uh, try to give them some tools, right? Because slow rolling is a tool in your jiu-jitsu toolbox. You're not supposed to go light all the time, right? Because that's not gonna help you in competition or anything. You're not, if you only 
slow roll and has no intent, have no intensity, then in competition you're going to get killed, right? You need different tools in your toolbox. One is hardcore competitions. For sparring, you need to do that. And uh, also you need to roll normally. And also you need to be able to go super, super light with people. And some people have one of these and some people have all of these. And it is what it is. But we can practice all of them, right? And um, this one is super valuable, in my opinion. Because if you are a person who has this skill, who is really good at going light, usually people will pick you for warm up more often, right? And we all know, like we all know the, the, the few people in the gym that, that everybody's like a little bit like, unless you have a really good day, you know? And most people are like, oh, this guy's standing with his hand up and you're like, mm, 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 you know? <laughs> because he might probably break my arm from just like pure power, yeah? But uh, if you have this skill, it's really valuable for your training partners. Also, if you go to a camp, it's really nice if I go to a camp, I'm, I'm only human, I cannot roll with 100 people in a week. Um, but if there's someone, if you show up at a camp and you're really good at giving a tactical slow roll without you know, just trying to, ah, oh, let me see if I can beat Christian because he's some kind of like, I don't know, he did this for a long time. Uh, I can only do so many of those rolls. But if you, have, if you have this skill and you're really good at, at giving a, a nice, smooth, relaxed roll, you don't even have to be a high level. White belts can do it too. Then you will always be picked first, right? And I promise you, you get way more rolls with black belts than, and, and people who are tired and injured and stuff because they will see you as a valuable training partner. And uh, I, will, I roll with everyone who walks through the door. That's my rule. A anyone, no matter how, good, how big or small or anything, I will try to roll with everyone. But sometimes I just had like a knee surgery or you know, everything hurts and, and then I will, if I have to choose, I will always pick the people I know where I can get a, a nice uh, slow roll, right? I say if I, if I pick uh, competitive roles at the camp, I could probably go five rounds in a day and that would be it for me. If, and then if I, if I go with, let's say, I know Vim is like super good at this, I can roll with him for an hour even if I'm injured, I come straight out of, uh, of knee surgery and I know it will be totally fine and still a mental challenge. Yeah? So you see, if you can have that skill, you will get way better training, I think. And people will like you more, you know? <laughs> um, now, let's get to it. Uh, so, there are two main problems in terms of teaching people how to, to roll light. One is timing and the other is ego, so to say. Yeah? Uh, and we will just address those with two simple drills and then and it's going to be kind of weird i promise you but in the end trust me it's going to work out we're going to put it together and i'm going to like guide you through the drill and pull some strings and play the right music and that in 45 minutes you're all going to be slow rolling super nicely yeah? uh, even with strangers and small persons and big persons together so um so the first problem is timing very often when you try to go slow you know, especially when you're a beginner, you don't have the, the kind of the capacity to analyze the situation quick enough, right? It, you know when you roll normally, you like, you try to see what's going on. And in the beginning, you have no idea what's going on. It's just like a big mess. And then as you progress in jiu-jitsu, suddenly you can see, oh, maybe he has this option to escape. I might prepare for this and this. And the flow chart starts to, to grow for you. Right? And after 10, 20 years, it's like the fucking matrix, you know? It's like every split second is a information superhighway, just like. 100 gigabit into your brain of things that can happen. Yeah? Um, but in the beginning, this is really difficult. And what happens often when people cannot predict what's going to happen is that they just tense everything. Right? They just start to, to be, play safe and they, they just use strength right? to, to, uh, to feel more safe. Right? Because that is what technique is, is that you can predict what's going to happen. So all you have to do is I, I put my hand there, then I know that option is blocked for him and I don't have to worry about that. And my other option is like, <laughs> And do this and not breathe for 30 seconds. Yeah? So we try to get out of that and it's very very simple we just have one drill to take timing completely out of the equation. Yeah? And uh, let me use uh, Giles. So the drill is really simple it's like chess. Yeah it's maybe some of you know something like this but if you're really if you're kind of a high level it's really really boring but if you're a beginner this can also be very valuable. You can sit down. This can also be very valuable kind of thing to do. Because often as a beginner, it's like you don't have time to think about anything. And this takes that out. For this, the, the, uh, the drill is simple. We take one move each, and you can take all the time you want to think about your next move, right? And you just try to do the best possible move in the situation. That means if I catch him in a submission, I've been really, really smart, right? I really set him up. Because he has all the time in the world to think about his move. It's just like one move, one move, one move, like this, right? Um, so, we play by gentleman rules, so the definition of one move is kind of up to you. 
right? For some people, one move might be one grip, and for some people, they're like, <laughs> your turn, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Hence, gentleman rules. You have a conversation. Ah, maybe that was not one move, yeah? Uh, and that's pretty much it. You can take all the time you want. So let's say uh, Giles starts. You go. Hey, what a gentleman. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't even touch me. <laughs> um, and uh, I can take all the time I want. And one thing, you cannot resist anything, obviously, because it's move for move. So even if I did, said this is my move, he cannot resist it, even though it's completely, it would never work, right? But it, I have to try and do something realistic, yeah? But he must accept that maybe I'm a white belt and I think this is a great thing. Uh, okay, so let's say my move would be, Was that your move? The head? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for that. <laughs> yeah, this kind of sucks. <laughs> so we'll, we'll stop it there. <laughs> You get it kind of simple, right? And it's also funny, you have all the time in the world to think, very valuable for beginners, right? Because in that, let's do the same situation with speed. Right? What, how much time did you have to analyze what was happening? Right? I mean, we could probably figure it out in that pace, but most beginners would have no chance to see what was going on, right? So, let's try this, move for move, gentlemen rules, have a conversation, Zero resistance, you cannot resist anything, all right? I'll put on some nice, slow music, and then we're gonna build it up, build it up, build it up, and at the end of the class, we're all gonna be having a perfectly smooth rope, okay? Let's try it. Switch partner, but try to grab someone who's either much higher level or much lower level than you. I know it's not always possible to find, but see if you can find a, a huge gap in uh, level. Okay, let's go. Same drill. A few minutes. This is a huge gap. So that can be pretty fun, right? Kind of entertaining, because you have time to think for once. You never have time to think, right? And obviously this will not help you in any way in competition or anything, right? But if even this drill alone, imagine if you're like super injured or you just didn't sleep all night or whatever, uh, you can still come in, get on the mats and move around with someone. And still you have to think a little bit, right? Sometimes you're like, mm, what am I doing here, right? Um, I think that's a valuable drill, but it's not going to teach you how to slow roll. Or it's not really even going to warm you up sometimes because it's so, so slow, right? So we have to add some more stuff. Um, and the next, the next problem we have, so this, this drill pretty much just, just does one thing, take timing out of the equation, right? Timing and strength. It does not exist in this drill, right? And the other problem is we have is, uh, is ego, so to say. Uh, it sounds in, like it sounds harsher than it is, but it's, it's kind of natural that when we, when we try to slow roll, one of the really big problems that people have is if they don't allow themselves to play, right? Because slow rolling is a dance. It's not a match or a, a sparring round or a competition. It's a dance, right? Imagine dancing with resistance, right? How would that look, right? I'm not, a, I'm not much of a dancer, but I'm pretty sure it would not fucking work, right? I, I think, is the salsa lesson tonight, Mede? Yes. Yeah. Imagine the salsa lesson tonight, but you try to not let the other person d do his or her steps, right? I was <laughs> like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. So, um, so we have to try. We have. We need some tools to deal with that. That people have problem uh, tr trouble playing, allowing themselves to play, um, because this is a this is play. This is dance, and we help each other to improve. And uh, imagine if you have a whole team of people who get really good at this. 
If we do this 10 minute warm up instead of doing fucking gymnastics, that will help everyone and everybody gets better, much better if we can have a, uh, like a challenging role that does not risk uh, like your injuries or anything. Yeah? So, so we, have to, we need some tools to take uh, the, I would not even say take ego out, but put fun in, right? Because the best way to allow people to play is to make them laugh a little bit. Yeah. Just like the, the other class I did the, the other day with the wrestling, is we need a fun element. Right? If it's fun, then people are less serious about it, and then we can dance. Yeah? Because training is a dance where we help each other. Competition, or let's say you fight for your life, you hope you never have to do that, then you try to win with everything you fucking got. Everything. But every single training is about improving together. Right? It's not just me improving and everybody else uh, it's like whatever you want to do, right? Because we have to, it's a team sport. So, next drill is really simple. We do the exact same thing. Uh, Jazz, are you ready for this? I think so. Yes, okay, so the exact same drill as before, except with one little twist, is that, imagine we're here. In the first drill, Giles has all the time he wants to think about uh, his best possible move. What is your A game move from this situation? Go. Run away. <laughs> Probably his best chance. <laughs> his best move, yeah? Okay. So, so, just take it, please. That's the first drill. This might be his number one go-to, right? If there is no, like, me powering and running around, if he could get this, this is what he would take, yeah? In this situation. Now, imagine that's his number one. What's your number two? Let's say you can't get that. Let's say I'm here. You don't like that side. What do you do? Okay, nice. What's your number three? Okay, good, right? So he's got kind of a list, right? Down. So imagine you have a list. Number one, two, three, four, five, seven. Now, imagine the list has 987 items. What is your 987th item? What is the least <laughs> likely thing you would ever do, ever, in this situation? Think. <laughs> it's funny because, funny enough, when we start doing this drill, and you say, what's the least likely? Everybody's doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Just go flat on your back. So that's not the least likely. What's the least likely? Think. Oh, least likely? Mm -hmm. well, you and your back. So what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> he sucks at this, huh? <laughs> what would you do? Be creative. What's your least likely move? Well, one move. <laughs> one move, Jim. Okay. What's, what's going on? One move. One move. Think. This is Giles' number 987 possibility in life. Yeah. So for me, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Remember, there is no resistance, and I can take all the time I want. <laughs> you see, I played this before. I guess it's not. Okay, you move. talk more about I think what are the benefits and it is the silliest shit I know I know please. but trust me trust me it has actual application for what we're trying to do. I'm not just like taking a piss okay. so let's grab a partner and we do that yeah? and I want to see the most creative shit possible don't just go flat on your back yeah let's go 
That was pretty fun, right? Yeah. So that's a simple tool to make people laugh in jujitsu, right? And we have to implement that in, in this what we want to try and accomplish. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to add one thing, and that's super important. If you end up doing something that looks like jujitsu and it resembles a position, a submission, anything, ten push-ups. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Instant. Okay. Already, as you can see, it's kind of difficult, right? It's kind of difficult not to do something that because you've been doing the same motion patterns for so long. And you really have to think not only out of the box, but far, far out of the box. Yeah? So be really careful. I'm gonna walk around as a referee. If I see something <laughs> looks like a side control, yeah, then it's ten push-ups immediately. Alright? Let's try a few more minutes. You can grab a new partner if you like. So that's pretty fun, right? So even if, if it's kind of a bad mood or you're tired or injured or something, if you, if you just take one day and make people do this, promise it's gonna lift the mood, right? It's not the, the best for your competition skills, but it's still a fun thing to do in jiu-jitsu. And sometimes actually when you think that far out of the box, because usually you're like, your flow chart is pretty set, then you'll come up with some things that could be maybe not your A game, but could be some fun little side challenges to do in jiu-jitsu, right? Uh, and I have a ton of these because we, we, I used to always put my, I had like an introduction course and every six months we would just do this. We had like two weeks of all these drills and we came up with the, with the silliest stuff and, and I still try to pull it off in sparring sometimes because it's fun, yeah? I mean, just something like, uh, I pass a lot if my belt is open. I pass a lot by throwing the belt in the face and passing, that was fun. And also I like, I try to do this pass. Bunch of the face. And I kind of pull it off sometimes, yeah? Because they get scared. It's a flying butt. And, I just try to get here. and also some weird positions like like this, I, I, I use it quite a lot. And it just comes from from this drill and also this, this position. It's great. I love sitting here. And it just comes from that thing. And now it became my 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 best setup for omoplatas. I, I try to I try to get to here from from uh, from mount or side control. Usually it's like, the challenge is to go from, from north-south for me, and then <laughs> and try to sit here. And now the challenge is how many seconds can I sit here before it gets out, yeah? So, weird things. Also, uh, uh, one of my favorites is if yeah, I can get him to turtle. I, I <laughs> <laughs> the more seconds, the better. With Prit, I can stand here for weeks. He just doesn't. Uh, <laughs> he just only goes That's to the torch. <laughs> and of course, the biggest challenge is if you can actually, like, <laughs> and then go. <laughs> that's, that's five points. OK, anyway, so sometimes you'll come up with something that you never even thought about, and it's kind of fun to try and implement it. Like any computer game, you need side missions, right? You, you need to do the achievements. You know, have you ever played Grand Theft Auto? It's like when you get tired of the missions, you, you try to get biggest face plant or like biggest jump, all these things, right? It's just a computer game. Anyway, so now we try to implement this. So we mix the drills and it's pretty simple. You do the first drill where you do your best possible move every time, number one, right? But when you hear the whistle, your move is, a, I, will call it, I call it the monkey drill. Yeah? It's, a, it's a silly move, a monkey move. One whistle, one move, yeah? You just kind of throw that in, and then you go back to the chest stroke, okay? And for now, you have all the time you want to do it, okay? So take your time. We're just gonna go short round, and then I'm gonna add a few more things, and then slowly you will see how that progresses to actual 
nice slow roll. Okay, let's give it a shot. So let's turn the music. That worked pretty well. You see how they kind of mix together? So now we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add one more thing, which is the time limit. Yeah? So to begin with, you have 10 seconds for each move. In the beginning, you could think 10 minutes if you want, but now you only have 10 seconds, right? So when I stand here, he starts counting. 10 seconds, right? Within 10 seconds, he has to do his move. So he's got plenty of time. Yeah? At some point, I'm going to shout another, like five seconds. Yeah. And then he only got five seconds to think. And sometimes I'll say two seconds, one second, back to five seconds, back to ten. I'll guide you a little bit up and down. Yeah. And whenever you hear one whistle, one person does one super silly fucking move. Yeah. Only one person. Only one person do one move and immediately you're back to the same five seconds or two seconds or ten seconds. All right. So we start with ten seconds. You have plenty of time. I see how it goes and then I, I turn you up or down. In, in speed, yeah? Still chest drill and the monkey drill. Let's go. Okay. How did that feel? You start to feel a little bit of flow. Yeah, you work together. And you see the, the closer we get to zero seconds, the more difficult it gets. All right, that's why I kind of have to guide you slowly down. And we go a little bit, bit up, up, up again so you find that Dance, right? Move, 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 move. Until we can get to the to zero seconds where, where it, it just becomes free, right? <clears throat> now, we're gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna guide you through it again, but this time, at some point, if I, if I feel like it looks good, I'm gonna say zero seconds, and then you're free to go, right? But before I let you loose, we have to talk about some ground rules, yeah? So the first is, remember it's a dance. Right? It's not a match. There's a huge difference between a sparring match and a dance. So you have to dance with your partner in a strange way, right? You have to follow each other around, all this stuff, right? Uh, <clears throat> the next thing is, any submission is always catch and release. You cannot finish a submission. If you go for an armbar, totally fine, but you have to let it go. If, if your partner taps out, you do 100 push-ups, okay? Because then you're not dancing then you're fucking hip throwing your salsa partner, right? Um, and then we have to get to, it's, <clears throat> there's a rule, there's a 50-50 rule in slow rolling, which is very difficult because sometimes, you know, and we all kind of know this, if one person is going slow, relaxing, yeah, maybe past the guard, I'm really relaxed, I'm in my arm, just take an arm, bro, you know, just go again, slow, round ends, and the other, and, and you feel like, oh, I was going really nice and slow, the other person's like, Phew didn't get to do shit, right? And, uh, and that's often a problem, that people feel like they're going slow and being nice, but in reality, they do 98% of what was happening, and the other person was just pretty much being a dummy, right? So let's say even if I go slow here, but the other person is here, the only way he can play along is by going just a little bit higher intensity. But when he does this, I will accelerate and then it explodes, yeah? And that is the problem. So the way we, we solve this is that very often people feel like they've been nice, going slow. I didn't go hard at all, you know, what are you talking about? But in reality, the partner has a very, very different perception, right? So there are two things we do. One is that there's a score at the end of the round. Me and Giles go around, and afterwards we have a little uh, feedback loop, thank you, Prit, a little evaluation round. For 20 seconds, we have a conversation, and we will brutally honest score our partner. So I think the score was 50-50, and maybe he says 80-20. That's not good, right? So then I have to fix something for the next round. The goal is that we both say it was a 50-50 round. Yeah? So you just give a score. I think I was doing 50-50 top-bottom, attacking, defending, and he thinks I was doing 100% and he was doing nothing. Then I have something to think about, right? And this is where we as a team kind of educate each other to be better at this thing, and then if you have a whole team of in your, in your academy who's really good at this, and everybody's like, oh, actually, maybe I was kind of a, a douchebag in that role, yeah? If you can kind of get everyone on the same page, then, boom, 20 minutes warm up like this is like super high value for training, yeah? Um, so you have to give the score at the end, and you have to be honest and say, okay, I think you were attacking 
way more than me. And it's pretty much like, how much was I having the initiative and how much what I, was, I, was he having the initiative, right? So if I've been on top a little bit, I have to keep the score during the round. Maybe I did a pass, I did a mount. He's relaxed, right? I take the back, yeah? And suddenly I'm like, oh shit, the round is almost over. I've been doing 100% of the attacks and he's been nice, yeah? So then I will let him sweep me. Give him, a, give him an armbar, right? Just to kind of try to level the score up. Because my only goal is that after the round, he's gonna tell me, fist bump, 50-50, nice round, yeah? That's my only goal, is to please my training partner, okay? Um, so we try this a little bit, a few rounds, and, uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna stop it and have a little quick talk, and then we go back in it, and hopefully within 10, 15 minutes, then we're all, like, it's just going, rolling, right? And what I really want you to try, in the beginning, take someone that you practice with now, but as we switch partners, try to take someone you don't know, because this is part of the, the part of the whole thing, right? You have to relax with someone you would be a little bit tense about rolling with, right? That's, that's the purpose of your, the, the training. So, we do the exact same as before. I say the seconds, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1 seconds. If I say zero seconds, you're on your own, and as the, as the round ends, you hopefully get a perfect score from your partner, right? Okay, so we try, and I start with a little bit of slow music, and if I feel like it's going well, then I'm gonna up the music, uh, so you can kind of find the rhythm, yeah? Remember the dance, so we need music, right? So, the grand final. How did that feel? Pretty good. You start to feel like a little flow, and you and you you notice how when I turn down the seconds, your brain starts to go, you know, overclock CPU. Yeah, that's why it's really important for beginners to start with like time to think. Yeah, because if you just have no element of of timing, if you just throw in like if you don't take out that timing element, then it's really difficult to catch up with your brain. Yeah, if you're not haven't trained for years and years. Did you notice one thing? Every time I blow the whistle, and you have to do a silly move, everybody just laughs. Or smiles, at least, right? Everybody, no exception, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's funny, right? Did you notice that? So what were the problems we were dealing with in terms of teaching people how to, to slow roll, right? Timing and energy, like timing and power, we take that out. Now I guide you for now, I've been guiding you move by move by move by move, taking that out. What was the other problem? People not allowing themselves to play with it and have fun and dance. Right? We fix it by just throwing in a little uh, thing that makes people laugh. Right? So when you're on your own, when I say zero seconds, you're also on your own to do something stupid. Right? Because very often when you slow roll with someone and you feel like this is going well, but damn, now he's starting to turn it up. And then it becomes like a little bit competitive. How do you fix it? All you do is just do something really stupid. Take off your pants. Right? <laughs> Throw the belt somewhere. Like sit on their head. Do something stupid. Hold their eyes. And immediately you will see, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, right. It's kind of like you snap it back to reality. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were supposed to have fun. This is a dance, right? Otherwise, it's like, uh, <laughs> like an actual dance, and then suddenly someone starts to punch. Yeah, you got to, hey, 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 no punching, no punching, no punching. Back to salsa, yeah? It's the same thing. So it's a little kind of, it's a little kind of snap it back to what we're doing. And this is super important because we all do this, and we're, we're in this, and we feel the flow, and suddenly, oh, suddenly it starts to pick up. And the tool is you throw in something very, very, very stupid, yeah? And I do that all the time. Even when I roll high intensity, I will do that all the time just to kind of loosen up the, the mood. It's like open the window, fresh air, and then we can continue, right? So now you grab, you can take the same partner again. We go a few rounds and then uh, one whistle, one monkey move, I count the seconds. Some point I say zero seconds, you're on your own. But remember, at the end of the round, you have an evaluation from your training partner. Right? They're gonna score you how good you were as a training partner. Okay? It should be 50-50, then you're good. Anything above or under, you need you have something to fix. Alright? So we're gonna do this. And when I say new partner, you take someone you don't know. Okay? Let's go. Three seconds. seconds <laughs> you have 20 seconds to 
you evaluate with your partner and give them an honest opinion, how good were they as a slow rolling partner? Honest. Let's hear the score. Brutally honest. And this round, everyone, this round starts. This round starts at zero seconds. You go three and a half minutes on your own. Right? Remember, your number one purpose is to that your training partner is going to give you the perfect score afterwards. Okay? Don't forget to throw in the monkey moves. Three minutes, and we're done. Okay, let's go. So how did that feel? Good. Very good. Did anyone get a perfect score, 50-50? Yes. Yeah. It takes some work, yeah? But it's a dance. Um, now, going back to when someone cannot do this, someone goes hard or something, right? If, if I just say, just relax, right? Let's go slow. But the person still doesn't go slow. My next step is like, okay, then I'm gonna smash you until you learn it, and he still doesn't, right? Then whose responsibility is that actually? It is the coach's responsibility. If you have one person on the team who cannot play the game and who will maybe even be of danger of injuring someone, it is the responsibility of the coach to work with this person so they become part of the team, right? An important piece of the puzzle. And I believe if, when I do this for a few, two weeks, usually a two week kind of, kind of little catch up on this, then everyone can do. I, I, pretty, I, can, I can count on one hand over 20 years how many people I could not teach this, but everyone. And once you have that skill as a team, it's highly, highly valuable. You saw what we did just now, you can probably keep going for an hour. No problem, yeah? No problem. And what if you show up, what if, what if everyone in your gym can do this? How many more trainings will you do because when you're tired or injured or you just don't feel like going hard or maybe you're the smaller person at the gym, how much more motivated will you be to, to go get on the match that day and not just like, oh, I'll stay on the couch today. Right? I'm tired, everything hurts, I have small injuries, they're all like huge guys, they're gonna crush me in the warm up. Or we can play this for an hour and sure, then I'll be much more likely to show up for training. So it's a matter of educating training partners to, be, to have this skill. And at a higher level, when you see higher level people rolling who are really good at this and also good at going hard, it blends together. And that's when I think Jiu Jitsu becomes really beautiful when you can see someone roll really hard but also dance yeah? they go super hard and then suddenly it's slow and there's a stop and a thinking and then whoosh, turn up the pace bam, 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 bam. competition style ooh, and it slows down because there's a situation to think right that's when it becomes really beautiful the, the kind of the seamless integration between these two but you have to start with competitive rolling and super relaxed slow rolling and then you find over the years you kind of find the connection yeah? and when they connect that's absolutely amazing. And you can have some fantastic roles where you just, everything clicks. Huh? Cool, I hope you enjoyed that. It looked really, really good. And obviously we only did this for one hour, but uh, spend some more time on it, take it home to a few friends and you can use that as warm up or whatever you do. Cool, thank you so much, enjoy.